Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Every week I'm going to be looking through Spectrum and the forums for dev responses on particular topics. This time we're looking at Star Citizen Network Reworks and the Organic Shader. Server client and network optimization is core to the multiplayer nature of Star Citizen. And there was a continuation of a thread that we were looking at recently, links below, with a question from ELEC. Can you also talk a bit about the upcoming actor networking rework and how it will be in comparison to the current tech, especially if it helps decreasing the movement and shot delays between players and the forward and backward jumping of ships flying parallel in the verse. CIG Gordon replied, I can talk about it a bit. I'm the programmer currently working on the actor networking rework. It's split into two parts, upstream and downstream. First, to clarify what an actor is, in the current game, that is any humanoid character either controlled by an actual human player or by an AI running around in the verse. It does not affect ship or weapon networking. They're different enough that they use different systems, though they do all have some common elements and strategies. Upstream refers to the communication from the local client up to the server. Currently, the actor movement is client authoritative. This means that when you press the W button to move forward, locally your client moves you forward and then sends the new position up to the server, which then replicates it to all other remote clients. This has a number of issues, not least it being a nightmare for anti-cheat as well as it having an effect on perceived lag. Most notably, if someone else has a poor connection, you see them teleporting about a bunch. We are moving actor movement and indeed their entire state to being fully server authoritative. When you press the W button locally, that is bundled up in an action and then sent off a component called the actor action handler this component replicates this action up to the server and then it's processed on both the local client and the server will move you forward hopefully the same amount there's a whole lot of code to make sure it does and the position from the server is then replicated to all clients with remote clients accepting it same as before and the local client validating against it too much divergence and they're moved to where the server thinks they are or rather were since by the time it's got back down he's likely moved on we reset and then rerun the inputs since the frame we were reset to there are a bunch of new complexities with all of this we have to do our best not to miss any actions we have to take into account the time it takes the actions to get up to the server we have to appropriately deal with any divergence between the client and server, and we have to have methods of mitigating lag. The most obvious user-facing problems to this will be improved validation and slightly improved experience when facing players on a poor connection. For the validation, since the server is fully authoritative and can tell us exactly when something has diverged, we can better cope with that. The previous method was very susceptible to poor server frame rate or network latency, manifesting most obviously with the Moby glass flickering open and then closed rapidly, or uh, ladders being a bit clingy. Those changes have already made it back into the main branch, actually. Expect them in 3.5. For playing with or against players with a poor connection, you will see them teleport around less. Though on their own clients, they will rubber band more as the server corrects them. For the most part, think of this change that has some minor improvements, but is mainly just a precursor to the next part. Downstream refers to the communication from the server to all remote clients. Currently, to smooth out actor movement on remote clients, we artificially inject a 200 150 millisecond delay into all of their movement processing. Being able to see a quarter a second into the future allows the various movement and animation systems to give a better visual result and having that buffer mitigates the problem of lag spikes. For us, this is not really a sustainable solution. Everything being 250 milliseconds out contributes to the game feeling laggy and is an overwhelming factor in the movement and shot delays uh, that people have mentioned. 
the plan is to now reduce this rewind amount significantly to something sensible, hopefully around two frames instead of 15 with improved dead reckoning and state processing, helping to cover over the visual impact of this. Another factor of this will be the remote client patching that is already implemented but needs some tweaks and bug fixing before going fully live. This means, for example, when I kill something on my client, I can temporarily take control of that remote actor to immediately play a hit slash death reaction. Since you tend to be looking directly at someone when you kill them, any latency on them playing the reaction is very noticeable at the moment. So removing the need for the hit to go up to the server and then come back down reduces the perceived lag significantly. Obviously, if the server disagrees with you, you didn't actually hit or kill them, then it will be undone on your client. Though, this should only happen in cases of extreme lag or cheating. We've been planning and working on this rework for quite some time and have confidence that it should improve things significantly. So better server, client reg, less teleporting, more smooth characters with less lag and better animation responses has been kind of well needed for a while now, certainly for the immersive polished experience that Star Citizen eventually wants to be. Um, obviously it is hard for them to do the sort of like networking tweaks for that. And they're going to continue to improve server and client optimization in regard to um, general systems and features using less resources, what data gets sent and saved to both um, get more players on a server and for it to be as good looking experience as possible. But also a state that PVP isn't really frustrating because of delays and it favoring sort of like the laggy person. You also want to be able to see that like when people are running around, when you're multicrewing with, with other characters, when you're doing an op together, you don't want them to be rubber bounding everywhere. So that is something they're working on and it's great that they've, um, they've responded in the way that they did. There was another thread by Mark underscore FC. What exactly is the organic shader? What improvements will it bring to planets? Will it be released with the next patch 3.5? Divi from CIG responded. One, mostly nicer looking rocks that better integrate with the terrain. Two, with the distribution and ecosystem improvements on the horizon, the redone assets on the planet surface with the new shader are planned to be released in tandem with the improvements. As the shader will benefit from data that comes with the improvements to realize its full potential. So no, even though the shader will be close to its final iteration with 3.5 internally, and having a bare bones version with a different feature set already being in use for mineables, it will not see widespread use with 3.5. Naming can be somewhat confusing as it is mostly to differentiate between solid organic objects formed naturally and solid machine objects made from metals and plastics that use the hard surface shader. It is unlikely that it will see much use for plants as its features do not really bring much benefit for them. You can find the source links to those threads down in the links below. If you've got any threads that you want me to take a look at or any cool information or anything you want to bring to my attention, again, chuck them in the comments down below. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for February. It's for a Cutlass Black and Star Citizen game package. All you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. If you don't have a gaming PC yet or you are upgrading, instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming. They allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high-spec Windows 10 environment to any other PC, Mac or device like a smartphone or tablet. It is working really well in Star Citizen's 3.4 branch and be sure to use the code board gamer if you do decide to check it out to get a discount. Links below. This channel exists because of its community. If you wish to support the channel further, below there are links to Patreon, Subscribestar, and there's the YouTube channel memberships, literally the join button below this video. VIPs do get some exclusive stuff and early content as a thank you as well. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, please drop a comment below or poke me on discord.gg forward slash boardgamer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.